<laughs> nah. But anyhow, even a person with a poor voice can recite the Quran at least to the extent, and I've had so many people tell me. I remember one time uh, in San Antonio, they had a seminar on death and dying. Dying and death, I think is what was the name of it. And uh, of course it was geared at the seniors. And they brought all these seniors in and they had, you know, what's the perspective of death and dying from, for instance, from the Hindu point of view. Then another day it was from the Jewish point of view and a Christian point of view. And then they asked me to go do it for the Muslim point of view. So I gave a talk about what's death and dying, Islam, etc. And when I was all done, one of the elders there came up to me and he said, you know, I just have to tell you something. Uh, thank you for coming and everything. He said, but I just have to tell you, you know, that song you were singing, sure pretty. <laughs> Let me share something with you right now from the Quran. This is the first surah. It's called Al-Fatiha. And this is the seven verses repeated in our prayers every day. We pray five times a day and we recite this a number of times in each one of those prayers and it's about 17 times a day we recite it. So maybe that's why I remember it pretty good and maybe it'll sound all right. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين The meaning of it is difficult to put into the English language because the English is very limited, very limited when you come to these beautiful words. But I'm going to try anyway. First it begins with, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most beneficent. All the praise, devotion, and worship is due only to Allah the most gracious, the most beneficent. You could also say the most merciful. It's also in there too. The ruler on the day of judgment. You only do we worship and you only do we turn to for guidance. To guide us on the straight path. The path of those who have your favor but not the path of those that have your anger or those that go astray. That's pretty much usually the English translation. Is that right? Pretty close. So, from there, the next thing that comes up in the Quran is the biggest surah. That was one of the small ones. Then a really big one. 286 verses comes up. And it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. ذَلِكُ كِتَابُ الْوَرِيبَ فِي هُدُ الْمُتَّقِينَ عَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُكِمُونَ صَلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ وَعَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِلَاكِعْتِهُمْ يُكِنُونَ أُولَئِكَ لَا هُدًا مِّ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ مُفْلِحُونَ That's not all 286 verses. That's the introduction to it. Allah says here, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I use different words of English, the same words in Arabic. Alif Lam Mim. These are three letters from the Arabic alphabet. And then it says, that is the book wherein there is no doubt a source of guidance for those who put a petition between themselves and the anger of Allah. And I gave that in quotes. Taqwa. Taqwa. Put a petition between you and Allah's anger from the root in the Arabic language. And we say pious or righteous. So 
only going to be a, a size, a source of guidance for those who have this taqwa. And they believe in al ghaib the unseen, and they establish regular worship, a salah. And they pay charity from the risk, from the things that Allah gives them. They give charity. And they have to believe in what's being sent down to Muhammad, which is the Quran. And they have to believe in what was sent down to the previous prophets, which is the Bible. What we call the Bible today. The book. And they have to believe in the resurrection. They have to believe in the next life. They have to believe in heaven and hell. The day of reckoning. All of that is a part of the belief. And then it continues. It says, and these people, the ones who believe this, they're on the guidance of Allah. And they're the ones that are successful. So the request that I made in the first part when I asked Allah to guide me, He told me, the guidance is right here in the Quran. And if you do these things, and He gave the list, then you're guided. So, that's a good way for me to kind of wrap it up and say, you know what? We talked about the science. We talked about the miracles. I want to be guided. Do you? If you believe there's a God, I guess that's the best one to turn to. You don't need to worship what He creates. You need to worship Him. And the only way you're going to find that out is from Him. No other way. So He sent a book. And He sent a messenger 1,400 years ago. All you got to do is be a real scientist today. You know what a real scientist does? He doesn't start out with preconceived notions. He doesn't start out with prejudices. He starts out with a clean slate. He starts out with a blank piece of paper and takes his pen and then he listens and he watches and he records and then after he goes to a point and he sees something doesn't work, he throws it away. If it doesn't work, doesn't fit, I don't need it. I only need the facts. Just the facts. And this is exactly what the Quran encourages us to do, to think, to reflect, to observe what's around us. So with that, I'm just going to say that the prayer I made, I, I really mean it. I ask Allah to guide me and all of you. I ask Allah to guide every single Muslim and non-Muslim to the real truth and make it easy for us to be rightly guided. I mean. You've been listening to Islam always and we're broadcasting almost live today from right here in Houston, Texas at the Medical Center. And till next time, always go to our website at Islam Always.